Hello everyone. So Lindsay asked in class on Tuesday how it is that you can map the characters onto the morphological cladograms that you guys are going to be generating. And so I want to show you really quickly how to do that. First, let's do an analysis of the data set that I the morphological data set that I first used from your from your first exam to show you how to use Winclade and Nona. And I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. So we'll do a real quick heuristics and heuristic analysis. And we will set our tree style to mm. a style that you like. This is just the tree style that I like. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to map my characters. So we'll see which ones are homoplasious versus homologous. And I'm going to number my characters. Okay. This is the tree that I'm going to use, the primary tree I'm going to use on my poster. So I'm going to create my tree meta file, and I'm going to call this final tree. Okay. Now you also know you need to do a bootstrap analysis, right? So let's go ahead and do our bootstrap analysis. We'll do 200 replicates. And remember, I should say before I go on, that this, these are the numbers that you're going to want to record down here for your, um, for your statistics, right? So these are the important statistics that you put on your most parsimonious tree that you see here. Now I want to do the bootstrap analysis. So let's do two of the replicates. And let the analysis go, which will take just a second. Okay, so now we have our bootstrap tree, so we're going to want to save this tree. And I'm going to call this final bootstrap. So we know that that's our bootstrap tree, and I'm going to save that. Okay. Now I'm going to exit out of Winclay to Nona. We have our trees saved. And so now what I want to do is I want to open the poster template that um, I posted up onto Blackboard for you guys to use. And I'm going to use the basic template. I'm going to pretend like this is the first time I've ever done a poster, so I'm going to make things simple and use the very basic template. So here's my template with the appropriate fonts for the text under each of the massive, the, the major headings, and also the appropriate references text down here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use for my legend uh, text size, I'm going to use the text size that's down here in my references section. So the first thing I want to do is, um, for me, is I kind of want to make sure that I get my figure legend correct for my morphological tree. So I'm going to copy this text box down here, and I'm going to paste it up here, because this is going to go in our results section, right, because all of your trees will go in your results section. And I'm going to blow things up a bit so I can see what I'm typing here. And I'm going to call this figure one. So this is figure one. Single most parsimonious tree. From a heuristic analysis of six morphological characters. I'm going to say that the my my tree length, and I can't remember what it was off the top of my head, I didn't write it down, but let's just say my our tree length was 8, our consistency index was 87, and our rescaled consistency index was 85. And I'm going to have to tell the viewer what the different symbols mean on our tree. So black and white dots on branches indicate homologous and homoplasious characters, respectively. Okay. Numbers above branches indicate character state changes 
it numbers the low branches indicate bootstrap support. Okay, so this is what I know I want to have on my tree. Okay, so I'm going to zoom back out now. I just did that for typing. And I'm going to make sure that that uh, it's sort of centered with um, the main heading. And you can do this by going to Format, Align, Align Center, and now it'll just sort of center everything for you and keep things centered. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to, I'm going to just delete this text box for now, is we want to insert our tree. So we go to insert picture. Okay, now we have to find the picture we generated, which for me, for you, it's hopefully going to be simpler than finding it in my labyrinth of folders, but I know where they should be. So I'm going to put my final tree in. Okay, it's pretty small, so I'm going to need to pull it up quite a bit. Okay, I'm going to move my figure legend up just a touch. Yeah. Okay, so anybody who's looking at this figure and says, well, what are these black dots? mean can look down into your figure legend and figure it out. But one thing we need to do is we need to tell the viewer what these numbers actually are. We say that they're they represent character state changes, but which character state changes? And this is how I'm going to deal with it. So I'm going to blow this way back up again so I can see. Okay. I think I'm going to need a little extra space here, so I'm going to decrease the size of our figure a little bit more. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in almost like a little legend into um, this figure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this size font. So all I did was um, I did a control C there to copy the text box for the figure. So I'm going to take this and move it over here. So all I did was copy and then resize the, the figure one text box. Sorry, I got down here at the bottom really quick. So I'm going to get rid of this text because I don't want this text here. And then I'm going to say, and I don't remember which what the characters were, I'm going to make up characters, okay? Um, character state changes. One equals character change from entire to serrate leaves. Okay, I kind of want all this to be on one line. I just think it'll look nicer. So I'm going to decrease my font a little bit. Let's take it down to about 16, which I think should be fine for a figure um, key. I'm going to decrease this a little bit in size so that everything kind of fits neatly underneath the results box here. Okay? And I'm going to bold one just to emphasize that mm -hmm. you know, this is what you should look for on the tree. And then I'm going to go I'm just going to bold two again. Character change from red to purple flowers. Again, I'm just making this up. change from non-petiolate to petiolate leaves. Character change from 
um, let's say Calibris to Harry Stems. And you can make this font, because you guys may have upwards of 20 mm -hmm. characters. It depends mm -hmm. upon your group, really. You mm -hmm. may have fewer than that. You may have only six. But you may want to reduce or increase the font to make it look really nice. Okay. You can also put this key... above the figure, or you could put it to the left of the figure, whatever you think looks the nicest. Remember, you want to sort of produce an aesthetically pleasing poster. And you can tell whether you really like it or not. I'm just going to select both of these things and move it up. We'll move them up. And I'm going to put our figure legend a little bit closer to our tree. And then I'm going to zoom out. and see how this looks. And I think aesthetically it looks okay. okay. So here you can see your character your character state changes that are indicated by the numbers on the tree and here's your really nice figure legend. Okay. And then what you can do is below it you can insert your morphological tree, or your, excuse me, your molecular tree here. Okay. And again it would be from an analysis of however many morphological characters. You're not going to have to include this type of legend for your molecular tree. And then what you if you wanted to and you had the space you can use a you can use the combined molecular plus morphological tree down here. Okay? So there are a variety of ways in which you can do this. And so then in your text box, you know, the, for your discussion, you can say figure 1 There are two clades, uh, two major clades of uh, in-group taxa, blah, 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 whatever you want to discuss in your discussion. The one thing that I forgot to do until just a second is to put bootstrap su support values on, on the tree. And you know what I'm going to do? I mean, you can do this in paint. But I'm going to kind of try to make my life a little easier, and I'm just going to do it right here in PowerPoint, because I find PowerPoint really easy to use. And I'll just use sort of a small font, let's use, or a font that's essentially equivalent to this font. I think all of these are in Arial, and the font size looks almost like it could be right around 20. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a text box. Okay, and I'm going to insert it right here. And I'm going to take that bootstrap value from the bootstrap tree that I saved, which I can then refer to. I'm not going to do that here to save time. And I can say, okay, this is 86% bootstrap support. Move it right there. And then I can say, okay, what are the other... Oops, excuse me. I'm going to copy this text box. Mm -hmm. I usually use control C and control V to do this. So I'm going to do control C, control V, okay, and the bootstrap support here it was 100. Again, I don't remember what these were. I'd have to, you should refer back to your tree to figure out what these numbers were. And then just insert your bootstrap support right underneath each of these branches. Okay. So then when you zoom out again, See, here's your tree with your bootstrap support, your characters, an indication of how the characters change, 
very detailed and great legend and then a discussion of what you're going to be showing in each of your trees okay so these are the basics guys i hope that this helps and uh, let me know if you have any questions